Hi again. Lately, I've been working on giving the world generation an overhaul, especially the erosion algorithm. The new algorithm gives interesting river formations where the valleys get larger the further towards the coast they get. At the coast, primitive deltas can form, and in regions of high uplift, mountains form. Overall, it's more varied than the old model. The previous implementation gave very fractal and homogeneous patterns. River valleys were of more or less the same width, despite the water flow, and the landscape lacked the position areas like the deltas, which I've got in the newer version. In this video, I'll mention some different approaches to simulating erosion by water, I'll describe my new model in some detail, show some examples of generated worlds, and lastly, highlight what can be improved. There are many factors which shape the landscape of continents, but the two most powerful are tectonic activity and erosion by water. Tectonic activity creates the overall shape of the continents and works on a very high scale. If you look at a map of the entire world, what you see is the effect of tectonics. Erosion by water affects the landscape strongly, but on a smaller scale. To best see the effects, one has to zoom in. On this scale, most features are the effect of erosional and depositional processes involving water. As of yet, I've not implemented a proper tectonic simulation, but I've looked much more into erosion by water. To simulate the effect of running water on a topology map, there are many approaches, but to simplify, they can be divided into three categories. The three categories being to simulate 1. Water as particles, 2. Water as fields, and 3. Water flow as directed graph networks. The erosion model which I previously used was based on the directed graph tree approach. Advantages of that model is that you tend to get steady states where the erosion matches the uplift. From a mathematical standpoint, steady states are nice. Some drawbacks are that it's not very parallelizable. Thusly, it's hard to run on the GPU, so it's rather slow. To be more specific, the algorithm is parallelizable as long as there are no holes in the topology. The particle approach can be highly parallelizable, but the effects you get from that model is not well suited for erosion on global scale. It's more suited for small scale topologies like A valley or A mountainside, not for continents. The last approach is to simulate water as a field. This approach can be easily implemented on the GPU, thusly speed is a non-issue. Drawbacks of this approach is that you need a pretty high resolution to get interesting features. Also, if you have too much water, features tend to get blurred out and you lose detail. Now let's talk about my implementation. The new model runs entirely on the GPU, so it's fast, and it combines two of the approaches above. I simulate water as a field to get the overall erosion and deposition patterns, but I also do some stuff which is similar to the directed graph tree approach, which gives me more fine details. In my model, you can visualize the graph tree approach as a fine needle making precise changes, and the water field approach as a broad brush making large changes. I combine the two approaches since the graph tree approach can't deal with holes and lakes very well. The combined effect is satisfying at least for now. I'll now briefly go over the water field implementation, which might be the most interesting part. Before doing so, I'll just say that I've assumed that the time step in the simulation is 1, just to make the equations a bit clearer. Each tile consists of four entities, bedrock, sediment, suspended sediment, and water. Each iteration, water is added through precipitation. Water is then moved to adjacent tiles. We consider a triangle I, it is surrounded by triangles J, K, and L. We define a flow variable F. Fij represents the flow from triangle I to triangle J. We can calculate the flow in the next iteration by adding a term to the flow of the current iteration. Term contains a parameter Kf, which is a flow speed, and delta H, which is the difference in total elevation between tile I and J. We use a max function to not allow negative flows. We do the same for each direction and now need to scale the flow values. If scaling is not done, more water can flow out from a tile than there is water in the tile. After scaling is performed and flow has been calculated for each tile, we can update the water values. We do this by simply adding the incoming flow and removing the outgoing flow. At this stage, we calculate the water speed, 
q. In this case, I've chosen to define water speed as the average between incoming and outgoing water. We also need a slope s, which we calculate using the maximum of the height differences. With the water speed and slope, we can now define a carry capacity. Carry capacity in this case is defined as the amount of sediment which can be suspended in water. Typically, the stream power equation is used for this purpose. The stream power p is a function of water flow q and slope s. m and n are numerical parameters. I've chosen m to be 0 0.5 and n to be 1. With the inclusion of an additional scale parameter kc, the equation for carry capacity becomes this. The larger the kc parameter, the more sediment can be carried by water, which in a sense increases erosion. We now come to the stage where we can do the actual erosion. Consider these three entities. The arrows here indicate different processes which may occur. Erosion transforms bedrock into suspended sediment, deposition turns suspended sediment into normal sediment, and dissolution turns sediment into suspended sediment. To decide which of these processes to apply, we compare the amount of suspended sediment to the carry capacity. If the amount of suspended sediment is larger than the carry capacity, we deposit some sediment. If on the other hand, the amount of suspended sediment is lower than the carry capacity, we dissolve and possibly erode. Erosion is done only when there isn't enough sediment to saturate the water. Areas of high slope and high water speed will erode the land, whilst areas close to the ocean, where slopes are typically low, tend to be dominated by deposition. After the erosion deposition event, suspended sediment is moved in a similar way to how water is moved. Lastly, I destroy any water which reaches the ocean level. The reason for doing this is that I want a constant ocean level. If you skip the ocean destruction step, any water flowing into the ocean will raise the ocean elevation, which might be interesting in another scenario. If one were to allow dynamic ocean levels, evaporation should be included. Now that the main features of the model has been explained, Let's look at some results. The initial noise of the world makes the water form into large pools. These pools slowly fills up and spills over. As they spill over, the flood water erodes the wall of the pools, emptying them even further. As the water flows towards the ocean, it carries sediment with it, which is deposited at the shore, creating new landmass. Mountains and higher land can also be seen being formed due to the iconic uplift. One feature, which I'm very satisfied with, is that river valleys tend to get wider the closer to the ocean they get. They start one pixel wide, up in the mountains and in other places of origin, and gradually grow wider. It can also be seen that deltas are formed where some rivers enter the oceans. Due to the low resolution, the deltas don't look that impressive, but the overall shape is there. We can compare some real-world deltas on the right, and some deltas in my program on the left. Some real-world deltas would be the Nile, draining into the Mediterranean Sea, the Mississippi, draining into the Mexican Gulf, and the Amazon, draining into the Atlantic. From a gameplay perspective, these would be highly fertile lands, where early civilizations would likely form settlements. In my opinion, at least, this new model gives much more varied and interesting maps. One large negative of the model, though, is the tectonic uplift. At the moment, I just use some pearly noise to create an uplift map. This isn't very realistic. In the real world, fault lines seldom form in the middle of continents like this. So the tectonic simulation is definitely something which can be improved. Another thing I need to work on is the distribution of sediment. If we look at a sediment map here, it can be seen that most sediment is located on the shore. In real life, sediment is distributed much more widely over the continents. It is possible that one could implement an additional weathering simulation to add sediment more widely. The vegetation simulation could also generate sediment, as the roots of plants can reach into cracks of rocks and eventually make them crumble, forming sediment. Another thing to look into is to increase the resolution of the world. To enable more interesting river formations, which can't be seen at a current resolution. In the next devlog, it's possible that I'll try to implement one of the improvements mentioned. It's also possible that I might start adding some basic gameplay mechanics. Since it's summer, the work isn't going very fast, so the next volume will be sometime in August.
With this, I'd like to end this devlog. As always, the project can be found on itch.io, where a free copy of the game, at its current stage, can be downloaded. Thanks for watching.